Welcome again to our series, Questions from the Old Testament. Our question number seven comes from the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 26. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? To give this question context, we'll be reading verses 1 through 27 of 1 Samuel chapter 17, beginning in verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and they were gathered at Soka, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Soka and Azekah in Ephes the Mim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered, and encamped in the valley of Elah, and drew up in line of battle against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of bronze. And he had a bronze armor on his legs, and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron. And his shield-bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of an Ephaphrathite of Bethlehem in Judah, named Jesse, who had eight sons. In the days of Saul, the man was already old and advanced in years. The three oldest sons of Jesse had followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab the firstborn, and next to him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest. The three eldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For forty days the Philistine came forward and took a stand, morning and evening. And Jesse said to David his son, Take for your brothers an ephah of this parched grain and these ten loaves, and carry them quickly to the camp to your brothers. Also take these ten cheeses to the commander of their thousand. See if your brothers are well, and bring some token from them. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. And David rose early in the morning, and left his sheep with a keeper, and took the provisions, and went, as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the encampment as the host was going out to the battle line, shouting the war cry. And Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. And David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage, and ran to the ranks and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with them, behold, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines, and spoke the same words as before. And David heard him. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were much afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches, and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David said to the men who stood by him, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For... Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in the same way. So shall it be done to the man who kills him. Have you ever been part of a conversation when someone remarks about a somewhat famous person? I remember when he or she was just a child. I knew then that they would grow up to be someone special. Or maybe the flip side of that might be, I never would have guessed they would have amounted to anything. It is interesting, but of no surprise, that the only one who saw the greatness of David was God. 
not Samuel, not his father, not his brothers, and certainly not King Saul, as we shall see. We read in the previous chapter those powerful words of God to Samuel. Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. The Lord looks on, pardon me, man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Even today, those words startle and challenge us to remember it is not the outward appearance that makes the person, but what is on the inside. In my mind, I can just imagine the conversation around the dinner table of Jesse and his sons when David is asked about how his day went, perhaps rather nonchalantly telling them, Oh, I killed a lion with my bare hands today when he tried to take one of the lambs. As courageous as it might seem to kill a lion or a bear when you are alone, it is quite another to go up against the champion of the Philistines, who in all likelihood is at least twice your size. But notice what David tells Saul in 1 Samuel 17, verse 37. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. David's faith was not in his own strength, but in the Lord, for he gives the glory to God. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He's just another foe that the Lord shall deliver into David's hand. A good companion reading for today would be David's 18th Psalm. God would continue to lay waste to all of David's enemies. I wonder what prevents us from having this confidence in our Lord. And Lord willing, let's meet again tomorrow and look at another question from the Old Testament.